National Bank Tower. This is KLEKLP Jonesboro. The voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. Good Tuesday morning, Jonesboro. This is meteorologist Tim Root with your KLEK 1 to 2.5 FM weather. Mostly sunny skies today. High temperatures for your Tuesday in the mid-70s, northeast wind 5 to 10. It'll be cool tonight, 48 to 54, mostly clear skies and very light winds. A little bit warmer, mid to upper 70s, Wednesday, mostly sunny and light southeast winds. And even a little bit warmer Thursday, partly to mostly sunny near 85 degrees. Jonesboro, that's your KLEK 1 to 2.5 FM weather. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Oli Barrett. Angela Merkel's office is declining to comment on reports she told UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson a Brexit deal is unlikely if Northern Ireland leaves the customs union. Turkey says all preparations are completed for a military incursion into northern Syria. The US has blacklisted 28 Chinese organisations over claims of involvement in alleged abuse of China's Uyghur minority. and The EU's new foreign affairs chief is vowing to make the Balkans a key priority. It's 9.01. Community Conversations is brought to you by Arkansas Early Learning, offering no-cost child care in Jonesboro and Northeast Arkansas. Applications at arearlylearning.org. Arkansas Early Learning is a nonprofit organization. KLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. KLEK 102.5 FM, good morning to you on your Tuesday. It's October 8th, 2019. This is Community Conversations. Kato Wonder is in the studio with you. I'm joined by Kubila Jones, host of Community Conversation, and joining us today are members of NEA. Kubila, why are you laughing? I couldn't even get through my I didn't realize I'm like right here. Oh, yeah, you're looking at yourself on the screen. So, uh, let's do it. so as I was saying, we are joined by members of NEA Pride. We have Miss Yesenia Hernandez. Is it Miss or Mrs.? Miss. No, I'm sure Miss Schroeder. Oh, oh Miss. Miss <laughs> Karina. I, I know your situation, Yesenia. Miss Karina Sanders, Mr. Cody Missy, and Mrs. Shelley. Russell Anderson. So, uh, before we get into our discussion, I do have to give a disclaimer because uh, this we will be talking about LGBTQIA issues, and this is a hot button topic. Kaylee K, we do not endorse nor support or oppose any particular position on this topic. This interview is provided for informational purposes only for those that are watching on our Facebook live feed. We do ask that any questions or comments do be kept civil and respectful. And with that, we will go ahead and get started. Quabila. There are pride festivals, parades, and whatnot held all across the nation. So, okay, what made you all come together and say, let's have one in Jonesboro, and then we'll get it to the daytime location? Um, so, um, so yeah, just seeing it on TV that they're all over the United States. Um, there has been a consistent uh, pride in Little Rock. There have been some in the Conway. There were some in Northwest Arkansas. And for the amount of population that we have here in Jonesboro, to not have um, a pride event is, has been a little disheartening. Um, there have been a couple events a couple of years ago, I think 2014, 2015, but it hasn't been kept up, kept up consistently. A couple of years ago, I, I was involved with another group that, um, that tried to get it up and running, but it was just, um, it, there were challenges to that. And so this year, um, um, this year, I, well last year I finally came out to my mother and I thought, well, I, I'm living in my truth now and I'm not afraid to, um, to be a part or to lead a, a group of people that um, are going to make this happen. And so I, uh, I asked some of the most incredible people that I know that could help pull this off together um, to, uh, to try to get this up and going. And in a very short time frame, we have accomplished a great amount of work. And I, um, I'm honestly, I'm impressed with how much work we've, uh, we've done. And we're really excited about um, having our first First Pride Fest uh, in downtown Jonesboro. Okay. All right, so tell us the daytime um, and then 
Mims will uh, detail of the events that are happening that day. The day of Pride. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, October twelfth is our is the day of Pride. Um, we are currently. Um, like around 10 a.m., we're hoping to have a march that's student-led from either Jonesboro High School or St. Mark's um, Episcopal uh, Church. So we'll have a march from like 10 to 11 a.m. Um, it's gonna go into the festival, which is in Centennial Plaza in front of the um, FOA. It's gonna be from 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. We're gonna have music, we're gonna have a kid's da uh, dance costume, we're going to have um, Pub, uh, public speakers, people were talking about their experiences uh, with being part of the LGBT community, particularly this community. Um, also, we're going to have um, we're going to have um, a um, a pageant. Um, we're going to have a pageant, uh, Mr. Miss and MX uh, pageant, and these are the people that are going to represent us at the Christmas parade. So we're really excited about having a representation at the Christmas parade. Um, but yeah, we'll have artists, um, we'll have a pride zone where we'll have free, we'll have free hugs, um, we'll have a wedding chapel, we'll have a little area of um, LGBT history. Um, it's going to be 50 years of Stone since the Stonewall riots, so we'll have a little bit of history of why we're even celebrating Pride to begin with. And before going to the further, Yesenia, you mentioned about the Mr. and Mrs. MX. So for those who may not be familiar with what that prefix means, could you explain that? I would love to. So, um, so Mr. and Ms. is. Um, uh, an MX, like we're letting anybody um, compete in these pageants um, that, that are 18 and older that however they want to identify their gender expression. So if someone wants to identify as male, they can, um, they, they can, they can go ahead and compete or miss. MX is a, a non-binary term, so if someone doesn't identify as male or female, um, they can go ahead and enter that competition as well. So we're trying to be as inclusive as possible during this, uh, during this event. Right, would anyone else at the table like to weigh in? We don't want you sitting here to carry all of the weight. <laughs> she's, cap she's capable of holding it down, but we, we want to make sure we hear from everyone at the table. Um, also, I would like to add that during the march, we will be highlighting suicide awareness and prevention, um, bullying and youth among, among the LGBTQ community because it is a problem. And I think that uh, we want people to know that it's, so serious that we need to have safe zones in the schools for the children so we're doing a lot on that day <laughs> trying to get awareness to that as well celebrating history and having a good time with the community all right cody so I would put also, my closer to you <laughs> sorry i'd also like to touch on some of the family friendly things that we're going to have going on during this uh time um the vendors that we're going to have, they all are going to be required to bring candy. Um, that way kids can actually come and do a little bit of a pre-trick-or-treat. Um, we're going to have a dance and costume contest for all the kids. Um, and we're going to have a special guest actually coming and judging that contest for them. Um, it's just going to be a lot of interaction for the community. and. Fear is the one thing that stems hate, and I think that if the community sees that we are trying to be more inclusive with them as well, um, that they will actually come out and give a great outpouring for us. Because again, we're just part of everybody's daily lives. They might not know that we're there, but we're here. And giving us a voice and giving us something to actually work with and actually be involved in the community that's mainly what pride fest is more about is getting out there and showing that we're just like everybody else and that we're here to have fun all right shelly um well one thing that we've not discussed yet is a portion of our proceeds um will not only go to uh, northeast arkansas pride and the um um the resources that we uh, want to better provide the community, but also to um, HIV and AIDS research and awareness. Um, we may not know this, but as a community, um, this disease unfortunately does live amongst us and um, we need to find a cure. And so uh, what better way than to come together and to try to 
um, to try to raise some money and, and, and do something better. In fact, our care will be there, um, as far as I know, giving free um, HIV tests. Um, anybody is welcome to come and participate. But um, but that's it's not just about the negative. This is about the fun. This is about the celebration of, of, of life and um, the fact that, uh, just like Cody said, um, everybody should be a part of the community, regardless of um, gender, creed, race, color, whatever you are, everybody is welcome. And everybody keeps saying family friendly. That's what this is all about. Um, we're not coming out to act silly like you might see they do in Chicago and big cities like that. Not to call out <laughs> Chicago. We all love Chicago. But, um, but this is a very family-friendly event, and, um, and it's just a celebration of, um, of love and friendship. And, uh, and we hope that everybody will come out. Um, it's, it's completely free. Um, I'm most excited about what Cody talked about, and that being the kids' dance and uh, costume contest that's going to happen at Straight Up Noon. Every kid in the community is welcome to come and join. And there will be a really cool special celebrity guest that the kids are going to totally, totally dig. So bring your cameras, moms and dads. Um, but lots of fun, lots of music, um, speakers, uh, poetry. Um, we're going to get some education out of these speakers. Um, and then, of course, uh, just just free fun. Like um, Yesenia mentioned free hugs. If you just need a hug, because sometimes we do, come on out and have one. All right. We've got a Facebook shout-out. Shout-out to Amanda Donovan, who says good morning. And, of course, if you have a question or a comment for the members of NEA Pride, you can give us a call at 870-277-1080. Or you can leave your questions or your comments on our Facebook Live feed. We're also going to have a wedding chapel there. So if anybody would like to get married at our first ever Pride Fest, um, the information is online, neapride.org. Um, you can go there and sign up. Um, what, what do you need beforehand? I guess we're talking Just about- Just your marriage license. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a free wedding for you mm -hmm. too. We'll have the officiants. <laughs> Shoot, we even have a bird seed to throw. So come on out. It'll be beautiful. <laughs> but do you have a broom to jump? A what? A broom to jump. A broom to jump. <laughs> we need to get a broom. <laughs> we'll bring a broom. All right, we got another Facebook shout out. Shout out to Cody Missy, who says, Thank you, Kaylee K, for giving <laughs> us a platform. Well, Cody, uh, appreciate that. Again, uh, that's what we do here at Kaylee K. We provide a platform for the entire community. It does not matter who you are, what you represent. Um, we just we, you're we, sitting in the room. We, exactly. Um, we, don't t we don't take sides. We just provide the information. Now, uh, Kabila, did you have something? No. Okay. If not, then I'll. I, I want to ask something. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'll start with Shelly just because I know that you are in a traditional heterosexual marriage. So obviously, you would consider yourself an ally, yep. even though you may not necessarily um, be lesbian, gay, bisexual, or right. transgender um, yourself. So talk about the role of allies in you all's movement because uh, some people may not, some people may think. Um, in order to be a part of uh, your organization that you have to actually not be heterosexual. Yep, it's true. I have been married to the same man for 22 years and we're still alive. <laughs> um, you know... And also, what, made, what led you to become an ally? Well, my very best friends are sitting at this table right now. And if they are struggling with something that I can help with, then it is my call to... Um, it is my duty to help them. Um, you know, I don't know. I think that I just believe that people are people and we all deserve the same rights as everyone else. Um, uh, just because God made us, I hate to use the word different because it's just uniqueness. Every one of us are unique in our own ways. And if God or mother nature or whatever you want to call it made you unique in your own perfect little way, um, then I believe that it's my job to, to, fight for those rights of everybody, regardless of um, color, age, gender. Again, I keep saying these things, but we are all just people and we all have to love one another and not just accept each other's um, differences, but embrace them and love each other for who we are. I have met some of the most incredible, wonderful, just compassionate, oh, and oh my gosh, just the most creative people that I probably would have never had a chance to meet had I not opened my heart and mind. I wouldn't, are there any other people at the table who identify themselves as an ally? Kabila? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, well, uh, of, of our panelists. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
I mean, I, I know, I know Yesenia, so I know Yesenia identifies herself as queer. Yeah. Um, I, but I'm not familiar with the other others, and of course, we we do want to be respectful of um, what people identify as. Well, I, well, I'm Karina Shoulders, and uh, I identify as a lesbian, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I just would like to say that being recently relocated to this area, it's a time for healing. It's a time for people to embrace and know that, you know, we have young people. I'm really about the young people because uh, we have to lead by example for them. So if they're saying, look, we need your help, we need to step out and do that. And so I'm just asking people that if you come out, just, just come and just learn. Mm -hmm. Even if, you know, it's not about hate. Just learn, just educate, take something back. Mm -hmm. Because the times are changing. Our children are, are showing us what they want and it's, it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. So we gotta get ahead of the game and start the healing in the community. All right, Cody. Um, so I am a gay man <laughs> and um, I have a partner. Um, we have been together for seven months now and I am the happiest I've ever been in my whole life. Um, everyone that is probably going to be coming to Pride Fest, um, they all need to keep an open mind. They all need to, like I said, we are everywhere in your community. You may not know that we are part of our community, but we're out there. And the things that a lot of people say, just offhanded, it kind of hits us hard because, again, you don't know if the person next to you is gay, straight, bi, trans. Um, yeah. I grew up in this area and I faced a lot of hate. So, Yesenia putting this forward and sorry um, it's okay we could we can move on and we, yeah. we de Cody we definitely appreciate you uh being open to kid and no matter how you feel about LGBTQIA issues um still to be in the position is still not easy you know because people get bullied people get attacked and this goes for straight and for non-straight you know people get attacked for anything I you know I've been bullied and attacked um, myself, so it, it's definitely not easy. So we definitely do appreciate your courage. So I'm going to bring it back to um, you sitting here. But tell us the listeners how you feel it's important to have an organization to where people can come together and feel safe. Because um, as Cody mentioned, this is Northeast Arkansas, and there is a sizable amount of the population that does not agree with your lifestyle. So what, okay. So what was the question before? basically about the importance of having the group f for people to come together so um so i identify as pansexual which means that i uh, i am attracted to people like i don't care about gender expression or their sexual orientation um i did just want to clarify that because a lot of times people have know what gay and lesbian are but they don't know that there are other types of sexualities um and i, I do identify as a cisgendered woman cisgender meaning that i identify with the sex that i was born with um but besides that so why is it important um just as I explain, I have to. Um, I ex uh, I explain what my what what gender means, what sexuality means. Like a lot of us don't have education of what what those things even mean to begin with. Um, and so because there is a lack of understanding, it causes a lot of fear and hatred and stigma. Um, I was, I've been talking to a lot of people around the area that you know have reached out because they have seen a pride and I've heard stories of children being bullied and like there are children in our schools that are drawing other children being lynched. 
So like children see the hatred that their parents perpetuate in the comments of, of Facebook, that what they say at the dinner table. I had, um, I, I was listening to a story of a child that identifies as trans and so they have to use the restroom that they don't feel comfortable in. The, um, they, they have to go into the, uh, the boys restroom even though they identify as a girl. And so they got beat up in the bathroom. And this is what's happening here in Jonesboro. So um, it's really important to have, for, for me, for, for all of us, to have this organization because the fact of the matter is we still live in a world where um, we're looked at as, as an abomination um, for a lot of people. And we keep hearing things like love the, uh, love the sinner, hate the sin. And, um, you know, I don't hear that whenever someone's eating shrimp. <laughs> I don't hear that when somebody's wearing cloths of different fiber. And so, um, when, when people use, and oftentimes, and it's, I'm not saying just Christianity, there's several religions that, you know, homosexuality <clears throat> is a sin. And, you know, whether we agree or disagree, um, the Bible talks about wealth more than it talks about being gay. Actually, the word homosexual is never in the Bible, and I find that to be really interesting um, because it didn't exist in, in that ancient language. Um, so it really does come down to interpretation and why the context and idiom of why certain scripture was written for that time, but that's for another conversation. <laughs> I was um, say. So that's another conversation. I've done a lot of Bible study uh, on the subject. But um, so we live in an area that is very, where there are a lot of churches and there are churches that are welcoming and there are churches that are affirming. So, um, so yeah, we just, we really wanna have more of a presence. I think the more visibility that we have, the more of the stigma gets taken away of who we are. And on top of that, like we wanna have an organization that children and other people can go and see um, that are, um, can go and see that they are safe, like, Sometimes just having a had just having one adult that's accepting in a school can help save the child of an LGBT child. All right, and you see, we're gonna have to leave it there as we get ready to go to a break. We're speaking with members of Northeast Arkansas Pride. We're gonna get ready to once again go to a break, but don't go anywhere. We will be back with more on Kate Billy Kate on two point five FM. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. Men, how can you be a better dad today than you were yesterday? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. Pursuing the goal of being an all-pro dad is one of the most important things you can do in life. And it's a goal we get to strive toward for the rest of our lives. So here are five ways to be a better dad to your children. First, be there for your kids. It's so important to set aside one-on-one -on -one time for each of your kids so you can get to know them and love them well. Second, share a passion. Find something you both like to do and do it together, whether it's camping, fishing, or playing a sport. Remember, your family first. For more resources on today's topic, go to markmerrill.com. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K-N-O-M-E-G-A 1908.com. Family Minute is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook gears underscore inc on instagram and the gears foundation at gmail.com this portion of klek programming can be made possible by your business your support will help in educating entertaining and empowering the community by supporting local talent serving the community you love and providing information on issues you care about from a different perspective call 870-203-9951 or visit klekfm.org to learn how we can help connect you more with the community or visit us at 1411 franklin street klek 102.5 jonesboro educating entertaining and empowering the community.
experience the joy with Bishop Adrian R. Rogers, pastor of Fullness of Joy Church, 2120 Thorn Street, Jonesboro, Arkansas, 72401. Wednesday night, Word and Worship, 7 p.m. Prayer, Thursday night at 7 p.m. Sunday school, 9.30 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 o'clock a.m. And our Sunday night live service at 7 p.m. From the KLEK Community Calendar. AC Care Service is a free service available to all Anticamp students. It includes free access to personal hygiene products, clothing items, and a laundry service. Protecting the privacy of each student accessing this service is a major priority. The students initiate the process by submitting their request via a Google form. After the request is processed, students will receive a notice that their request is ready for pickup. As aforementioned, maintaining confidentiality during transactions is paramount. The student's personal locker will be the pickup and drop-off location. Locker space is available. More information available via Kevin Ryan at 870-933-5820. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. And we're back on Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM with our guests, members of Northeast Arkansas Pride. We have Miss Yesenia Hernandez, Miss Karina Shoulders, Mr. Cody Missy, and Mrs. Shelley Russell Anderson. And again, if you have a question or comment for anyone at our table, you can give us a call at 870-277-1080. Again, that question is 870, excuse me, that phone number is 870-277-1080. Or you can leave your questions or your comments on our Facebook live feed. Again, we do ask because this is a hot button topic that all questions and comments are kept respectful. And we do have a couple of Facebook comments. Amanda Dunover says that is an awesome idea. Idea. Stan Moore says Yesenia is brilliant. I'm glad to hear her on KLEK. And Amberly Knowlton Hayes says, Great job, NEA Pride. I will see you guys Saturday. I want to ask a question about an article that was posted. Um, there's a local church, Cornerstone Methodist, that's hosting um, Ask Anything. And so tell us a little bit more about that panel. And I know that it's going to be going on for the whole month of October. So tell us a little more about. I guess who's on the panel or even how that even came about. <laughs> um, well, we had uh, a panel last Sunday okay. and it was very powerful okay. to be able to tell your stories to the community. And but basically, um, they're going to have different topics. I was, I was just going to let you talk about your experience since you were on the panel that I was going to explain how. Oh, okay. Well, my experience, it was good because I was able to not only tell my story, but also able to help people in the community <laughs> in providing um, information and having that safe place that they could ask questions. Because, you know, uh, it was like you could ask anything and people were very respectful and it was just a good experience. I would do it again. Oh, I was, um, was going to explain how it even came about. Um, I have a brain of alarm at 928. Um, so, um, so one of the things that I really wanted to do with Pride is to have panels where people would ask questions. And so right now, while we've, we've been doing Pride Fest and everything, I've thought, okay, we'll have our first panel a, few, a couple of months from now. Um, my friend Amanda Emerson, she's amazing, and she brought it upon herself to start these conversations as well um, to, um, to cover different topics. And um, so she reached out to me to help her um, find the panelists. And so um, <clears throat> the way that I see it is whenever you want to have a panel like that, you want to make sure to have a very diverse group of people. Um, so we had one ally. It was a woman, Karen, who uh, has been, uh, used to be married to a gay man unknowingly. Um, and they have a child that's also gay. So she's, she was the ally. We had Emma Gray, who um, identifies as a transgender woman. Um, Tevin, who non-binary, which doesn't identify as either gender, um, and he's also he was also bisexual, um, and um, I'm sorry, they, they, sorry, sorry, they, and so. See, so one of the things that we have a conversation a lot about is like gender pronouns is a very difficult thing to uh, for many of us yes. to try to grasp. So whenever one of us realizes that we misgender someone, it's never intentional. And one of the things we do as growing, all of us as a group, is try to be more respectful of how people want to be referred as. So they. So thank you, Cody. Um, and we also had um, Karina there, who identifies as lesbian <laughs> and cisgendered, or as a woman. And uh, we also had a drag queen come into 
to the conversation. I wanted to make sure that we did have a, a gay man represented, but not in the typical way that you see it in TV. So for one, it was a black man, um, and there's also an extra stigma and weight whenever someone identifies as part of the LGBT community in, people, in the community of people of color. And uh, he also came in expressing himself as a, you know, as a drag queen. So that was a really neat experience seeing this very diverse group of people in the LGBT community um, embraced in this church. Um, it was very difficult for one for them for some of them to even enter the church. So it took a lot of courage and, vul and vulnerability to be able to answer questions from from a place that they may have not particularly felt safe even entering. But um, ask me anything is going to happen every week in October. I'm actually going to be in this week's panel. It's going to be clever about racism, prejudices, and privilege. So I'm really excited to uh, to be on the panel this week. And so what they're doing is they're trying every week they're going to cover different things. I think next week is first the week after is first responders, and um, the week after that it's going to be grief. So and then that's going to be happening once a month after that. So we're just trying to break barriers and we're trying to break stigma of like different subjects. We got some Facebook shout out. Shout out to Co Cody Mo. Huh, Cody, you've been watching our feed while been <laughs> <laughs> David White, Stan Morris, Amberly Knowlton Hayes, and Amanda Moffitt Donovan. Kobe, do you have another question? If not, I have one. For those that, you know, not that they are discriminating against you, but they just still don't understand it all and they just don't know how to embrace it. And they, one, miss, what is it, gender? Miss, call you by the wrong, whatever you don't identify as. And is it frustrating or do you try to have a little patience with people who are still trying to navigate the whole arena? I would love <laughs> to answer that because when I first came on board, I'll, I'll be the first to admit that I was ignorant. I mean, I really was. I was not educated to the language and, and I, I didn't want to offend anybody. I certainly wanted to learn, but nobody made me feel like I was wrong in the way that I spoke. They would just very gently help me to learn to better um, use the right language, the the right terminology, that sort of thing. So it has been an extremely um, loving um, and, and, and comforting um, experience for me. Um, I, I have never felt such acceptance as a human being. And I know this is gonna sound silly, but sometimes I think to myself, it's kind of hard being a woman. And I know that that's gonna sound ridiculous because not only am I an educated woman, but I'm a white woman and I realize that I come from privilege. But at the same time, it's kind of tough being a woman. And so I think to myself, if it's kind of tough being a woman, how tough is it if you're being ostracized for whatever reason? And so I try to put myself in those shoes, even though I don't quite fit them. But I'm educated by my friends every day to move a little bit closer to what is, should be the norm and what should be accepted. All right, um, we don't have any additional Facebook shots, but one thing I did want to ask each and every one of you, and we'll start with Yesenia, because I've, I've seen documented incidents of some not so pleasant experiences that you all have experienced in the community. As individuals and as an organization, how do you navigate, you know, throughout your daily lives as individuals and collectively with carrying out um, what you're trying to do? So my one of my one of the things that drives me for me to like navigate myself through life is to try to leave the world a little better than it than it has been. And so with all of this, I mean, don't get me, we also have, uh, it's great whenever we go somewhere and we're embraced and we're loved, but when we are, um, when we are encountered with, with hatred or anything along those lines, the best thing that I've, that I can do or that in my heart that tells me that this is what I need to do is to count up, to try to counter that with love and compassion even though I know that people may disagree or may hate me for before ever knowing me um, I'm not gonna make the world any better by hating them back and so isn't that a beautiful point <laughs> So I, um, so yeah, like, and you know, sometimes I know it sounds like 
sometimes when I have conversations with with people and I see a lot of pain or a lot of hatred, I wonder what makes them or what drives them to be the way that they uh, that they are. And if I want them to understand where I'm coming from, the first step is for me to take a step back and try to see it from their point of view. Anyone else? So. <laughs> take your time. Um, so I grew up in Harrisburg. Um, it's just right outside of Jonesboro, a tiny little town. Um, in high school, I was very different. Um, I did not look anything like I do right now. Um, I had long blue hair. I was skinny. I was small. Um, and I was a band nerd. But I was also gay. And I was very unapologetic about who I was. And that gave a lot of backlash. Um, I, I am a suicide survivor, um, and it was that kind of hatred coming from every day at school that kind of drove me to that. And it's having Yesenia and our community be so, um, opening or open and loving and pretty well just saying that you're okay to be who you are and that we love you even if other people can't see it um i was told by administration when i was in school um you brought this on yourself Mm -hmm. just for being different um we did have anti-bullying policies in place but they weren't followed they honestly still aren't um so having NEA pride is it's having a place that's safe for me to be who I am with people that aren't going to judge me for who I am and that are going to show me love and compassion no matter what so this is a big thing for me because if I had this in high school I don't think I would have actually been drove to suicide and we got a and I, I want to respond to that, but I want to read this Facebook comment right quick. T.R. Hamilton says, good morning, everyone. Natasha Neal says, great information. So, Cody, you said that you were a suicide survivor, and it was earlier mentioned about the higher rates of suicide uh, within the LGBTQIA um, community. So I'm hoping, Cody, by you telling your story that it may help to encourage someone not to commit suicide. I, I am a, I do identify myself as straight, but I have been suicidal uh, myself several times. And I'm not talking about long ago. I'm talking about since KLEK has been on the air. You know, there have been times, knowing down times that, you know, I thought about killing myself. So it, it's something that affects everyone. But um, I guess the question I would have to the group is, what do you all feel you all could do more to encourage people uh, within your community and even allies and outside of your community um, to not commit suicide? Um, because at the end of the day, people who are suicidal, they're suicidal because they feel like the circumstances of their life are beyond their ability to cope. And a lot of that stems from feeling that there's no one to turn to, that there's nobody that will empathize with you, no one that will understand you. Um, so, can I speak just on the... Imp- oh, you send you? Oh, yeah. I'll shut up because you're no, like, no. you ready to go. Oh, no. I, no, I was just... Uh, so, um, so for... I just wanted to give this hotline for one. Um, it's Trevor Lifeline. It's one 866 488 so that is an affirming hotline. Like um, one of the one of the things is that whenever you go talk to someone, you may not necessarily um, it may not be with somebody that is affirming. And so we want to make sure that whoever whoever people talk to is someone that is you know will be affirming of who you are. Um, I myself am a suicide survivor. Um, this month actually marks the five year anniversary of when I almost took my t- my life away, and. Um, and I, I wish that I could say that there was a moment that I'm like, I'm, you know, that it was just a, a realization that I'm happy that I'm here, but it wasn't just a moment. It was a lot of little moments for the past five years that I have 
been able to build and be confident in myself of who I am now. It's taken a lot of therapy, which of course that there's a whole conversation about healthcare and access to healthcare. But um, you know, being being part of the LGBT community, you know, we have we can be straight and want to commit suicide. We can be uh, part of the LGBT community and commit suicide. And the reason that we draw more attention with the LGBT community is because it's just it's almost like it's an um, for the for the list of reasons that people have to to think that way whenever you're part of the LGBT community it just adds to that and so um, so yeah like I just uh, I recommend um, obviously seeking help um, talking to someone if, if you feel even if you feel uncomfortable you can go to the to the Trevor Noah uh, to the Trevor um, lifeline or you can go online and suicide prevention lifeline.org and if you feel uncomfortable even talking to someone there are chat rooms for you to talk to people that have been trained uh, specifically um, and, and there's also uh, suicide text lines. You can actually text, and the there would be a real person that will just text back and forth with you a, until you feel better. Mm-hmm. Kubila? Well, I thought Cody wanted to add. Did you want to add something? I, I did, if okay. you don't mind. Um, I just want everyone to know that NEA Pride isn't just an LGBTQIA plus uh, affirming organization we're also here to help anyone and everyone I mean it's anyone that's going through something anyone that feels like they're alone I just want you guys to know that you're not um, we're all here we all love you and we all support you you see any um, in order oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, no I just wanted to um, I'm actually a counselor and I just wanted to give some some tips on if you are suicidal right now is that death is not an option. This that you're feeling is temporary. You've got to get around a support system that everybody knows that you have suicidal tendencies. Because believe it or not, I'm a recovery suicide uh, survivor and my friends know what it looks like. And they will immediately hone in and be there for me. But nobody will know if you do not open your mouth. And I don't know if you all noticed this, but there are six of us sitting in this room. Four of us have said that they've been suicidal. Or five. (laughs) Think about that. And this is not even about agendas or (laughs) about... This is about human beings. Yes. So... Five of six people at this table have said that they've either thought of suicide or attempted it. Yeah. So yeah. this goes beyond NEA Pride or Pride Fest or exactly. a- anything yeah. anything else. So again, if you you know if you have no thoughts of depression, you know de- definitely reach out to someone. And most importantly, because this is something that's not talked about, if someone reaches out to you that is suicidal or is depressed, don't blow them off. I understand that you may not know what to say, may not know what to do, but sometimes that person who's just hurting, that person who's depressed, they just want a listening ear. That's all you got to do. Yes. It just offer your ear to listen. We are speaking with members of NEA Pride. You can give us a call at 870-277-1080 or leave your questions or your comments on our Facebook live feed. Yesenia, you had yes. your hand up. Yes, I wanted to talk about one of the best ways that we can do to combat um, like uh, suicide, um, prevent like suicide in high schools is to have one affirming adult um, in a school. If there's one person that accepts you for who you are in your school, it's been shown to decrease the likelihood of suicide in school, like all across the board. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, we're trying to create GSAs, which are can either be gay or straight, gay and straight alliance or the gender and sexualities alliance. And what it is, it's an LGBT affirming group, but whenever there are GSAs, there's also a decrease in suicide, not only in the LGBT community, but in straight high school boys. Mm-hmm. So this literally benefits everyone. And I think one of the reasons that it also benefits straight, um, the straight population is because whenever you're accepting of others, you are able to, ex- uh, to embrace your, the things within yourself that you may not feel comfortable with. So, and, I'm, and I'm glad you mentioned that because that's going to transition to my next question. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I was just going to touch on that. Um, like you said, that there are five people at this table that are suicide survivors. Two of those people are cisgendered, um, heterosexual people. So this is something that does affect the LGBTQ 
IA plus community a lot more often, but it affects everyone. everyone. And this is something that we need to get out there and we need to let everybody know is that suicide has no face. Suicide is mm -hmm. everyone because at any point, anyone could have those thoughts, those feelings and act on them. And we want to prevent that. Absolutely. All right. So Yesenia, my question is, and you mentioned starting the GSA alliances and things of that nature. Um, people who would traditionally consider themselves opposed, uh, we'll probably have to answer this on the side of the break, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it. They would say that just even you coming onto this program, just even showing up at all is you're trying to push an agenda. You're trying to force people to be that way. Like if you just by you coming on this program or you you having the pride fest oh the critics are saying oh you're just trying to make people be lgbtq themselves can i speak to this one well I, let's, I, let's pick it up on the other side of the break because i don't want to have i don't want to i don't want to have to cut I you off you are, like Anzi, just uh, well no we got 20 well we, i mean i we only got about 40 seconds and i, I think <laughs> your, your response deserves more than 40 seconds so we're gonna let i'm gonna allow you all to answer that question on the other side of the break thank you to each and every one of you that has tuned in so far thank you for all of your questions and your comments don't go anywhere we're gonna wrap up with members of nea pride this is community conversations on kate lek or 2.5 fm to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. No matter how you feel about the ups and downs of the stock market, you cannot gain long-term financial security without including investing as part of your financial plan. Here are some key things to remember while creating your investment plan. Make diversification a priority. Seek to create a mix of investments, beginning with mutual funds and bonds, as well as options such as real estate. Be ready for losses. Without some downside risk, there can be no upside reward and therefore no possibility of creating a better financial future. When you play it safe by choosing only cash or fixed income investments and avoid equities, you lose to inflation and diminish wealth in the long term. Anyone promising a risk-free investment with guaranteed returns is lying. The bottom line, don't treat investing like a lottery or gambling at the casino, but educate yourself enough to be comfortable with enough risk to get consistent returns on your investments in the long run. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters at AURN.com. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. Money Matters is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. Help keep Kelly K on the air. Give now through our fall fund drive. We are seeking 100 donors to give at least $20 per month, but we are happy with any gift, large or small. Come by our studio at 1411 Franklin Street in Jonesboro. Call us at 870-277-1080 or visit our website, klekfm.org, or you can use Cash App, dollar sign KLEKFM. Or text KLEK1. Send it to 44321. KLEK thanks CJ Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street, phone number 1-866-972-1268, or online at lscihelp.com. Jesus looked at them and said, 
With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Matthew 19, 26. With the motto of invest in your future, not your landlords, Sonia Sanders Realtor is there for you throughout the entire process, whether buying or selling a home. Listings and other information is available at soldinjonesboro.com, Sonia Sanders Realtor on Facebook, or 870-275-8712. The Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated was established on January 1, 1977, originally serving Blytheville, Arkansas, and now serving Jonesboro, Blytheville, Osceola, Marion, and West Memphis, Arkansas. Today, the chapter continues to make an impact by focusing on Alpha's national community outreach initiatives such as My Brother's Keeper, A Voteless People is a Hopeless People, Go to High School, Go to College, Project Alpha, Boy Scouts, and the March of Dimes. The Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is committed to Alpha mission of developing leaders, promoting brotherhood and academic excellence, while providing service and advocacy to the community. More information about the Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is available at MOL Alphas on Facebook or via email at molalphas at gmail.com. Do you like the music you hear on KLEK 102.5 FM? Do you like the educational programming that we provide? Do you like the service we provide to the community? Do you like having a station to finally call your own that represents you? If so, please stop by or call any of our underwriters or sponsors that you hear on KLEK and tell them thank you for their support. The support of our underwriters and sponsors is vital for us to stay on the air. So be sure to let them know that you thank them for their support. K-L-E-K 102.5 FM salutes small businesses. Small businesses promote local character and success, keeping money in the local economy, local jobs, entrepreneurship, community well-being, and so much more. Contact us today to learn more on how your small business could be featured on K-L-E-K for as little as $25 per month. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. And we're back on Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM with our guests, members of NEA Pride. And before we went to the break, I asked the question, uh, and so I'm going to ask it again so that we can get the answer. What would you say to people who feel that just by your press, just by you being in the community, just by you coming on KLEK, KAIT, all the other media outlets that you all have been on putting on this pride fest that you are trying to quote unquote force an agenda on people force people to be lgbtqia themselves what's your response to that and right. also most importantly to the people who would say that not only are you all trying to um, force this on the people that you all are trying to indoctrinate children into this lifestyle as well can i just ask are you trying to force me to be black or am i trying to force you to have blonde hair i mean it's, i don't it's... think either one of those is going to happen Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Just like the fact that I'm straight and they're not going to force me to be anything other than. Um, it's it's just a matter of this is the way we're born and we have to accept each other for who we are. And you're not going to change anybody to make them something that they're not. So that to me is that question is just moot. Maybe Yesenia or Cody um, or Karina have a better answer than I do. But to me, it's just a, it's kind of no offense to you, but it's kind of a silly thought. Well, again, it's a question that we have to ask because obviously we live in a community and all of us have heard this before. Who else would like to answer? I really like the, uh, the you know, can we make you just blind or can you, we make you black? Like that's, that's not going to happen. And we can do things to try to alter it. We can try to get tans, we can dye our hair. But the fact of the matter is, is that it's just covering up something that we really can't change of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it's... It, I was about to go into another conversation. This is a very <laughs> complex conversation, but I'm just like, so, so yeah, like there's no way that we can, we can change people of who they are. Um, just as you can't, I mean, you both are, in, are straight and I can't, I can't tell you like you have to be attracted to this woman and you can't change that. And so we, we really can't change who we're attracted to, who we are. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> oh, and I didn't, I guess I didn't answer that question is, um, for people who they are just not willing to accept, they don't hate you, but they're just like, I can't accept your truth. <laughs> like, again, they don't hate you, they just can't accept. And I'm sure it's something about them I can't accept. But the thing is, is that it's about educating and just respecting each other. 
you know, as long as we're in, when we're in the same space, just respect each other. I mean, and and that's where the problems comes in because I've been in Walmart and seen things done to people that's inappropriate because of the way they look. And you don't even know what's going on with them, you know? And I think a lot of that comes from um, what we're taught as children, especially things that are associated with um, our, our particular religions and how we view that. Um, I was raised in a, a staunch um, conservative home, very Christian. Um, I was raised that I, I should not like these people. There's something wrong with these people. But the bottom line is they're people. And if you stop and you open your heart, then you're going to learn that they're just like you and I. They put their pants on, they brush their hair, they brush their teeth, all the things that we do. But what they do behind closed doors is none of our business. And it's not gonna rub off on us like the common cold or, or the flu. And think about this. I'm a black woman. Do you think I would choose to stick lesbian on it? <laughs> I am. I mean, really, do I need anything else? And then I'm plus size. Do I need anything else? Now that's a conversation. For a <laughs> so I, I'm just saying this. I was born this way. Mm -hmm. All right. We got about two and a half, three minutes left. So anything else that you all would like to say, any other comments, a final uh, plug for Pride Fest, the floor is open. Hey, I'm going to plug Pride Fest. I am the events chair, and we have worked so hard on this. It is going to be so much fun. We have a day filled with fun. It starts at 10 a.m. with the walk. 11 a.m. kicks off Pride Fest. Again, it is downtown Jonesboro in Centennial Plaza, right in front of the Foundation of Arts. And we have got so much going on. Um, we are going to have wonderful speakers, uh, hugs, free hugs for moms and dads. And then again, like we said, lots and lots of family fun stuff, music, artists, speakers, crafts. Um, food, uh, the family pride zone, which is going to be so much fun. It's completely free. Bring the kids out. We've got balloon animals, face painting, temporary tattoos, crafts. The list goes on and on. Vendor trick or treat. And then, of course, at noon, the, um, the kids dance and costume contest. Uh, and then, of course, we're doing the pageant that day. And we need people to ride in our, um, our Christmas float. So come on down and be Mr. Mr. MX, Ms. Mr. MX, um, uh, Northeast Arkansas Pride. Anything else, you any? Um, just, I just want to talk to, tonight. We have a LGBT poetry night at six o'clock at the recovery room. Um, at nine o'clock, you can walk down the street and go to Cregan's and there's going to be a benefit drag show. <laughs> and um, so that's going to be to, like tonight's event. And then Friday, there's going to be a GSA in the Spring River, Spring River room, um, third floor of the student union. There's going to be a uh, coming out um, GSA party from six to nine o'clock. So any college students that are out there, we, there's also going to be a presence um, at the school at A-State. And hey, don't forget that special celebrity guest. Moms and dads bring those cameras. It's going to be fun. All right, uh, Karina? I'm just ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to have some fun. And also at the library, we have something going on too. An author... Yes. No. Uh, that's going to be October 22nd. There's October a, 22nd. Yeah, the, okay, that's a hit. Yeah, there's going to be, um, if I was your girl, it's, they're going to bring in an author. Um, she is a trans, uh, she's a trans woman that wrote the book from the perspective of a trans, uh, trans girl. And so it's just a learning opportunity for, for a lot of students. There's also, um, every first Wednesday of the month, we try to have our general meetings. Um, they're at the library at 630, first Wednesday of every month. This upcoming November, we're actually having a little holiday pop luck for a lot of us going back home isn't an option or we we go to home family or our families kind of reject us or ignore a part of who we are so we want to have like a really safe place for everyone to to create a new family with here in Northeast Arkansas Cody um, I'd also oh, sorry. Oh. now you fine. we got 40 seconds left. I'd also just like to touch on the fact that um, this has not been I mean it's been pretty easy but um, I'm so excited about how much our community has given and helped us. Um, and to touch on that, we have a huge silent auction at Pride Fest. Which Cody's chairing. Um, which I'm chairing. Um, 15 seconds. So we need to get you guys out there. We need you to open up your pocketbooks and to help us actually give our presence meaning. In All right, Cody, we're going to have to leave it. Thank each of everyone for tuning in. This is a Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 <laughs> FM. <laughs>
Thank you for listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Broadcasting from the First National Bank Tower, this is KLEKLP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas 